It's Power Back Time on the Gutsy Podcast. Each episode brings you five minutes of condensed inspiration to reclaim the courage and momentum you've unintentionally given away. You've got big things to do, so let's get your power back. Building businesses over the last 16 years has not come without its own unique challenges. A couple of weeks ago, I got an email from a client saying, hey, would you be willing to share some of your biggest challenges that you've experienced in business? And it sent me on a little bit of an introspective journey. The initial goal was to provide some insight and vulnerability for her. But I thought, you know what, if she's kind of curious, maybe there are more of you that are curious too. That's why on today's Power Back episode, I'm going to share my five biggest business challenges that I've experienced over the years, backed with how I have overcome those same things and hopes to inspire and guide you if you're experiencing one of the same. Before we dig into my vulnerability bag, this is your final call to register for the Mind Fuckery Workshop. This workshop is designed to help you get out of your own head to learn a very simple technique that you can use to shift your thoughts in the moment so that you can move forward and feel way better about doing it. You can expect clarity. You can expect an aha moment. You can probably expect a tear or two. And you can expect to experience all of this alongside other like-minded women that are ready to make shifts in their own life as well. If you've been on the fence, this is your lovingly swift kick in the mental ass to let you know that this is the last chance. Go to lauraora.com, click on the Mindfucker Workshop at the top of the page, and I'll see you in class next week. All right, let's get into my bag of vulnerability, shall we? I want to start this conversation out by saying that challenges do not equate to failure. There's this big misconception that somewhere along the line we get taught that if we have a challenge or something doesn't work out or we're not sure what to do, that that makes us a failure, which means that we're a piece of shit. Okay, we're we're not doing that here. In fact, my greatest challenges have absolutely 110% been some of my greatest teaching moments. It's where I learned the most about myself. It's where I was able to get clear. It's where I was able to shift out of bullshit and where I was able to build better, stronger, more in-depth knowledge so that I was better equipped for the next situation. My greatest challenges have been my greatest victories, and I'm going to imagine that yours have been too. Challenges are an invitation to be still and gain more information. And if you approach a challenge through this lens, this is where you'll learn. This is where you'll grow. This is where you'll expand. But if you keep beating yourself upside the head and telling yourself that you're a failure and stop doing anything, then the challenge takes over and you stay where you're at. And if you're listening to my show, I know for a fact that you're not one to just fucking sit around. So we have to start reframing how we look at challenges. It doesn't mean that it's falling apart. It doesn't mean that you can't do it. It doesn't mean that you have no idea what you're doing and and there's no help and you're running out of time and money is scarce and all that stuff that starts to get really big and loud in your head. If we catch that and reframe it first to be like, okay, this is challenging. Let me buckle up. Let me bear down. Let me lean into this. Let me become part of the situation because you know what? I'm about to fucking learn something. And that, my friend, is brilliantly liberating. Am I saying you always feel like a super warrior wearing a really cool gold metallic outfit during this? No, not so much. But I'm telling you that you can change the trajectory of the direction that this thing goes in. So let's get into a handful of mine. This question came from um, a beautiful soul that's come into my world. She's on my newsletter list. I've had an opportunity to have some conversations with her. Jenny Powers, she is the founder of The Empowered Woman. Her links are in the show notes in case you want to connect with her or check out her website. I want to thank Jenny for hitting reply on a newsletter that I sent out. And by the way, if you're not on my newsletter list and you want to get some more nuggets of wisdom from me, In the show notes is a link to sign up. You'll get early access to power back episodes. So you get those a day early. And every Sunday I send out a no brawl Sunday newsletter that has introspective stuff, some mind setting tips, just like feel good to help set up your week on the best note. 
So Jenny's on my newsletter list. She hits reply to a recent newsletter and says, Hey, Laura, question. What have been a few of your greatest challenges in your entrepreneurial journey? And I thought, wow, this is a good question. One, I haven't thought about this in a while. And two, what a great teaching moment. What a great opportunity to crack open the vulnerability bag and let you know what these things are. Because chances are, if I've experienced them, somebody else has, or maybe you're currently going through something and you just need a little bit of guidance or a little bit of inspiration, honestly, to let you know that, hey, this is not forever, that things really can change. So here we go. The first one, one of my greatest challenges was trusting myself and then having the guts to follow through with the actions that I knew were needed. Trusting myself. That is such a common one. More people than not say, feel, and experience this. And then backing it up with, and then giving myself permission to do what I know that I needed to do because of what I felt. For instance, not taking on a client because I just, I just had a feeling and I took them on anyway, and it ended up being a disaster. Having a feeling about bringing on an employee, and I had that feeling in my gut, and I went against it because I wanted to try and be a good person and give them the benefit of the doubt, and it ended up not working out at all. Knowing when it was time to let go of a service, this is something that I don't want to do anymore, but I feel bad because other people are wanting it, and it's, it's something we've always done, so I just kept it. So I ignored the feeling again, and we ended up losing a lot of money, and for me personally, a lot of time and energy. Learning how to trust myself, hear my intuition, feel what my body is speaking to me, and then giving myself permission to take action that supports that feeling has been one of the greatest learning moments of my entire career. Because my friend, your gut, your intuition, that feeling, that drop in, that shit does not lie. But it's so easy to feel like you want to go outside of yourself. You want to get validation. That can't possibly be it because it seems so simple. I can tell you that every single time that I've gone against my intuition, I have either gone down a windy, turny road and learned a whole bunch of fucking lessons, or I ended up in a place where I had to dig myself out. I had a bigger problem to deal with. I had shit that I had to face. I had hard conversations to have. The point is, when I don't trust myself, it doesn't go well. And the only way to begin trusting yourself is to begin trusting yourself. And I know that that may not come natural to you just yet, but your intuition is like a muscle. And the more that you use it, the stronger it gets. So I started trusting myself on small decisions. I get the gut feeling and I act on that. I get the feeling, I act on that. And I noticed, I began to notice that when I trusted myself and I took action that supported it, things started to go well things started to be easier. The right connections started to come in. I started working with the right type of clients. Like all of a sudden I physically and mentally started to feel better. It's actually quite interesting, my friend. It's an interesting exercise to go through. Start trusting yourself on little decisions and notice how that begins to change things. That's going to build your confidence and that's going to help you make bigger decisions based off of trusting yourself. Second piece of craptasticness that I've experienced, but it's been very, very informative for me is not being everything to everyone. I spent an embarrassing amount of time doing a lot of shit that I didn't need to do. Why? Because I wanted to make everyone happy. Good old people pleasing at its finest. I mean, that motherfucker sits up on a throne, doesn't it? I'm here to tell you that you don't have to be a people pleaser, that you can, in fact, care about people and help people without expending yourself. And this was the lesson that I had to learn the hard way. I'll also preface this with I'm an oldest daughter. I was born in a household where everything was my responsibility. If I didn't do things, it never got done. I mean, you can see how this just like packed on top. So there is some some introspective things that added to this that got carried into my business. And total little side note here, um, your personal stuff does not go away when you are a business owner. In fact, it gets amplified. So if you're not dealing with the stuff that's happening in between your ears outside of work, it's going to show up in work. The lesson here was that I didn't have to be everything to everyone, that I 
also am an individual person with strengths and weaknesses, areas that I'm fucking awesome, that I can do shit with my eyes shut. And there are things that I drag my ass on for days or weeks at a time because it's just not in my area of awesome. I also don't have to go around and butter everybody all the time and make sure everything is always perfect and and keep the peace because sometimes hard conversations need to be had. Sometimes you have to make a tough call. Sometimes you have to let people go. Sometimes you have to tell somebody they're not the right fit. Sometimes you have to get rid of something that everybody on the planet thinks that you should do. When you stop trying to be everything to everyone, you get to be a whole version of yourself. And that version of you is the person that gets to guide, aid, and support other people. There's just this really bizarre expectation that I'm either a people pleaser or I fucking hate people. Like, it, it's, it's, not that, it's not that serious. It's not that stark. It's certainly not black and white. There is an enormous gray area in between. I get to choose to help people, to guide people, to show up, to, to teach them, to mentor them. And I get to do it in a way that serves me as well. Meaning it honors my energy and how much I'm putting out. It respects my time and what I can give to people. It leans into my strengths and where I can really help develop and grow and support other people. I'm not a people pleaser anymore, but I'm most certainly not an asshole. So shift out and away from that expectation that you're one or the other, that you can really support yourself and others at the same time. The third one, this one's tough. This one really took me a long ass time, to be honest with you. And it was knowing when it was time to let a team member go. Now, your team might be comprised of a couple of different ways. You could have employees, you could have subcontractors. If you're looking at this outside of a business perspective, this could be friends, this could be family members, this could be people that are in your world and in your circle. Knowing when it's time to part ways with someone, however that relationship looks for you, is is a tough one (laughs) because people, right? Emotions, feelings, expectations, history. I think the other piece of this that kind of backs with one of my first ones was trusting, not only knowing when it was time to let them go, but maybe even more importantly, trusting when I didn't feel right having them in my world in the first place. Sometimes a season comes to an end. Sometimes you or that person or both of you have maxed out of the position. Maybe it's no longer in alignment. Maybe goals have changed. Maybe there's a personality conflict. Maybe it's a skill set. I mean, there's a bunch of different reasons to know when it's time to let a team member go. And where I fucked up was trying to be the savior. I didn't want to rock the boat. I didn't want to upset people around me. I didn't want to come across as a cold asshole. I wanted everything and everyone to be happy. So I went above and beyond to try and quote unquote, fix it. Now, I do wholly believe that there is a period of time for growth and expansion and teaching and learning, right? Like, is there adaptability? Is there growth opportunity? I mean, there's, that's a whole different conversation. What I'm talking about is, you know, when it's done, I mean, your body tells you, your mind tells you all the signs point to it. It's the, it's the five seconds of guts to say, I know what needs to happen and I'm going to do it. What I ended up doing, trying to be a fixer and a savior in these situations, was I ended up making a bigger mess. I ended up allowing things to like this negativity to bleed into other situations. It impacted team members. It most certainly affected my energy and morale, our bank account. I don't have to save everything and everyone. It's okay for people to part ways and go on to their next best thing. So if you've got something or someone in your life right now where you're like, this is coming to the forefront, damn it, I hope she, I was hoping she wasn't going to say this, but here it is. Please take this as your sign that it is probably time to do what you know needs done. Don't hang on to people or situations for the sake of. Make decisions for what's best for everybody involved. The fourth one, and this one I still kind of mess around with, to be honest with you, is simplifying Holy Batmobile, how I have overcomplicated so many fucking things in my business, in my life, trying to make things easier. But it's interesting because this one ties into the people pleasing. It ties into the trusting myself. It ties into making decisions. It ties into trying to be everything for everyone, 
right? In that case, like everything just got really messy at one point. Actually, at many points, it's gotten really messy. And usually it's because I've gone outside of myself. I want to do it in a way that makes this person happy. I want to do it in a way that it serves that person. I'm trying to be everything to everyone. See how this shit is connected? Too many variables, too many tools, too many systems, not enough systems, not the right people in the right seat of the bus. Everything got so complicated that I didn't want to do any of it. So many offers, so many pathways, so many options, so many tools. I mean, you name it, it's been a whole forest of fuckery around here. Which is actually quite ironic, because now one of the things that I'm best at is helping people to simplify shit. Because I can, in a very short period of time, overlook what you're doing and how you're doing it and tell you how to make it 7,000 times more efficient very quickly. So it's almost as if I was fighting my own skill And I wasn't applying it to myself because I had this deeper belief, by the way, that to be successful, it meant that it had to be hard and complicated. So if it got easy, that meant something was wrong. So therefore, why don't I just make this shit a little bit more complicated? Was that a conscious thought? Absolutely not. Subconscious? Oh yeah, driving the wheel. One of the greatest things that you can ever do for yourself in any situation, but absolutely in business, is to choose one thing and simplify it clean it up. If you don't love something, get rid of it. If you're using 5,000 different tools, spend an afternoon, do some research, find one that checks a bunch of your boxes and get rid of everything else. Go through your services and what you're offering. If you're not loving it, why are you offering it? Give yourself the opportunity for it to actually be simple. Because what I have found is that the gunk the heaviness, the weight, the like eh, behind the scenes, more often than not comes from the fact that it's overcomplicated. And when you streamline and simplify it, put a very nice, neat process in place, it gets rid of a lot of that extra anxiety. Now I look at everything with how can this be more simple? It's already simple. Awesome. Can we make it even more simple? Because now I'm at the stage where I have absolutely no tolerance for complicated bullshit. If it's hard for me to understand, it's hard for my team to understand and manage. If it's hard for them to understand and manage, it's going to be really hard for you as a client to even fucking understand what to do with it. Also, I just really like organization and that makes me really happy now. I got to the point where I'm allowing it to be simple because I know in my body that it is safe. It is okay for things to be simple. Simplicity can equal success. And last but not least, one of the biggest challenges that I have faced in my business is me. You probably caught on to that through these last four because none of it really had to do with a bunch of tangible things, some here and there, but the majority of it was what was happening on the inside. It was experiencing how my personal backstory has come into play, how my traumatic experiences show up in my life and my business. It's recognizing and overcoming the mind fuckery, that back and forth ping pong game in my mind. It's the holding back when I wanted to do something, but I felt shy or ashamed or I didn't want to be seen or heard. It was playing small when I knew that I was ready to take up every fucking ounce of space in that room. The biggest challenge that I've had to overcome is me. But you know what I also want to say with this is I truly believe that I've experienced all that I have so that I could get to this place now here with you to teach and guide you through the same thing. While our exact experiences might be different, while our situations may vary, the number one thing that stops women from moving forward is themselves. And I, my friend, am no stranger to it. And the only way that I have been able to get to a point where I don't stop myself anymore. I'm not saying I'm perfect at it. I'm not saying I never have moments because I most certainly do. I'm just better equipped now. I have more tools in my tool belt. I know how to shift through these things. And the biggest reason is because I was willing to face it, to hear it, to talk to it, to feel it. Hiding this stuff in this theoretical box and shoving it underneath your bed, like as if it's going to go away. Um, I hate to tell you that box, it just creeps out from underneath there and it shows up whether you want it to or not. And this is where I'm a huge, huge, huge advocate for taking care of your mental health. 
Sometimes that's through seeing a, a, a doctor. Sometimes that's through medication. Sometimes it's through talk therapy or physical therapy. There are things like somatic practices. Maybe it's more of um, an energetic practice. It's your physical health and your mental health. By acknowledging, you know what, I, I don't know what to do right now. I need some guidance. Or I've experienced this thing. I've never talked to anybody before, but you know what? I'm going to have, I'm just going to have a little bit of gutsy today and I'm going to make that phone call and I'm going to get support. And then it's things like being in a community of like-minded women, listening to podcasts like what you're doing right now, showing up in circles where people are supportive and vulnerable in the best of ways, and also looking at these challenges as beautiful learning lessons. It's growth. You're unpacking and releasing all the shit that the world has put on you, my friend. Have I made a ass ton of mistakes in my business? Oh yeah, yeah, I most certainly have. But have I learned from every single one of them and applied that to be a better version of myself for the next thing? Absolutely. I'm not afraid of failure because I don't really think that it exists. I'm afraid of stagnancy. I'm afraid of staying in the same place. I'm afraid of never growing. I'm afraid of never expanding or experiencing life in the way that I know that I can. I'm willing to do the inner work. I'm willing to make the shifts and I'm willing to show up to learn and to grow and to apply. And you, my friend, have that same ability. My hope for today's conversation with you is to inspire you, to light a little extra fire under your ass, to let you know like, hey, whatever you're experiencing right now, it's not permanent you can grow. Mistakes are part of the process. And honestly, failure isn't an option when you continue to lean in for yourself. You know, something that I wholeheartedly believe is that it's not that you can't do things on your own. It's that you don't have to. So if this is a new endeavor for you, or if you're really ready to like peel back the layers and go a little bit deeper to honestly free yourself, the Mindfuckery Workshop is truly one of the best first steps on this journey. And look, I'm not just saying this because I'm trying to sell you a class. I'm not just saying this because I'm trying to get you into something. I'm telling you this because I've witnessed it first fucking hand. I have watched women literally transform their lives in five days. Why? Because they're in a supportive area, being asked the right questions with accountability in place. Next week, starts the next workshop and it would be an absolute honor to guide you on your journey. So go to lauraora.com and sign up at the top of the page. I love to hear and connect with you. So find me on Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram. I am at that Laura Aura. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.